got back in here right after it went through, but haven't been back since till now. There's no words. Could have been worse. My, I just feel so bad for the people that lost their lives. This can be replaced. You can't replace your life, so. But I've already been, I, I've already been looted. So, I couldn't, you know. I know what the, I know some things they got. So, you got people out there now, I'm sorry, but they got, they got a rifle and a shotgun. And they uh, took ammunition too, so. I'm sorry about that, but hey, when they won't let you back in here, it's sad that we do live in a society that does that, but what can you do? I'm Reverend Ron Davidson. I'm the president and founder of Cleaning for the World in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, the discussion today is about it, disasters and emergencies that take place uh, in your home. Uh, as well as information that you can give uh, your parishioners so that they will know what to do when a disaster occurs. We live in a, a, a strange time and I can tell you that having worked disasters now for 16 years that very few people are ready for a disaster. Not only the tornadoes but the hurricanes, the flooding that takes place uh, around our home here in Lynchburg, Virginia, a few years ago it was a tornado. It was the first one that I know that even hit the area. Uh, we've had several occasions of massive flooding, uh, particularly in, in 1969 uh, in Nelson and Amos County where Hurricane Camille came through and, and wiped out a whole community that was totally unexpected. We know in, in just in the Lynchburg area uh, just months ago, we had a train wreck where uh, fuel was dumped and a massive fire took place and there was pollution down the river and they had to remove people from their homes for a period of time. Uh, there was another propane fire that took place, an explosion in a pipe, and people were out of their homes for up to a month. Uh, these things can happen and we need to have some way where you will sit down with your family and communicate a plan with them. And we're talking about fire safety, uh, we're talking about a home invasion, uh, we're talking about natural disasters that take place. Uh, and these things can happen anywhere, anytime to anyone. And you, you simply need a plan where you can, particularly with the, the children, but with everyone that says, okay, if, if something happens, then this is where we will meet, this is where, how we will leave, uh, this is these are where the documents are in case anyone uh, needs to know, uh, this is where the key is kept for the bank, uh, just simple information. Uh, if you live in an area where there are tornadoes, there are a lot of hurricanes, and, and that includes the whole Gulf, it, in, it includes the whole eastern shore uh, of the United States, you, you need a, a plan of uh, where you can tell other family members that do not live with you where you're going to go and what's going to happen. Uh, I remember from several major uh, disasters with hurricanes where people uh, literally took hours and hours and hours for evacuation and they, they did not have any plan. People did not know where they were. Uh, when Hurricane Camille uh, took place there was a family that came uh, to live with some friends and they had evacuated uh, the Gulf Coast area and they were here for three days before their parents and their in-laws even knew where they were. Uh, they were calling everywhere trying to find them and, and not letting other people know where you're heading in an evacuation uh, can, can be very, very difficult on the family. Uh, my first experience with what I would consider a disaster uh, occurred when my father was pastoring a local church. Uh, he had a family in the church that uh, had a mom and dad and two young teenage girls. Uh, the mother had never written a check. 
she did not know anything about the finances of the home or any of the situation. Uh, and uh, suddenly the, the, the father had a heart attack and passed away immediately. And I can remember going with my father, as I often did, to, to visit families in the church and sitting down for hours trying to help her uh, put together a financial picture. Uh, he was a part-time pastor and a full-time banker, so he knew a lot about what to do. But it, it took months uh, to even begin to, to put the family back together financially on top of having to deal with the grief. Uh, several years ago, I was at my daughter's and uh, in the Saturday afternoon began to feel real faint and was having some chest problems and went to the hospital. They thought I'd had a heart attack. They kept me overnight. They did all kind of tests. Uh, the next morning they uh, did some further tests and, found, and they came in and said, your heart is in great shape, uh, but you have cancer. And uh, that went on for three or four weeks before they decided that there was absolutely nothing wrong with me except for a sinus condition, esophageal reflux. But it, it caused me during that time to really think about my own financial situation. And, and I realized that there was a lot of information that the family just did not know. So I began a plan of operation and I took all the financial information about the house, the cars, uh, the bank accounts, the, the checking account, the savings account, the investments, took all of that information, set up a, a trust for the family and gave every family member a, a report uh, of about four pages of just everything that they would need to know. Uh, most people do not realize that some credit card companies put life insurance on you. And it was not until the death of my 36-year-old sister uh, that one lady if, that I was talking to about uh, her estate uh, said, you may want to call and, and check on things. And, and she called me later from her cell phone to give me more information. And it turned out that the insurance company uh, had about $70,000 of life insurance with double indemnity for accidental death, which is what occurred. And all of that information would never have been shared by the insurance company, and they have no legal obligation to share it with you. So it's important that, uh, that you check on your, your, your credit cards and, and all of that so that you can set up a plan of action that everyone knows what's going on, uh, the wife or husband, uh, any oldest children that you may have, and that you keep a copy of it uh, in a safety deposit box. And in that safety deposit box, you not only need a, a, a record of all of your financial information, who to contact, your life insurance, uh, all the rest of it, but you also need a, a copy of the title of your house. Uh, most people don't think about this, but if you are in a major disaster and you go to FEMA for a loan, uh, for a flood, for a tornado, for a hurricane, uh, for any kind of disaster, uh, they're going to require before you receive any assistance some type of documentation to show that you own the home. And there are literally tens of thousands of people uh, who go to FEMA who do not have any any documentation at all so they receive no assistance and oftentimes that's zero percent interest for an extended period of time. Uh, you need birth certificates. Uh, my wife recently was applying for uh, the, the, the paperwork for her passport and uh, found out that she did not have a birth certificate and then you have to go and make application for that and it takes a period of time to do that. Uh, any health, in, uh, any type of insurance record, particularly life insurance, uh, the plan itself needs to be copied and put into the, uh, the safety deposit box. Uh, all the necessary legal papers, uh, if you do not have a will, it is very important that you get one and get it soon. 
so that you have uh, the right paperwork so if anything suddenly happens to you uh, then you will have the resources your family will have the resources that they need and having pastored tens of thousands of people I can tell you that after doing probably 400 450 funerals that there are very few people that have all the documents together which then takes six months to a year for this state to be settled we are in the process of putting together a booklet. The, the title of the book is I'm a Prepper, which means that you are preparing yourself, your church, your family, the community for disasters that take place locally with you. So my suggestion is get a copy of the book, share it with your people. It is great information to put in newsletters. It's great information to prepare them uh, on what to do as far as their prescriptions are concerned. Uh, one of the things that I learned the hard way is I keep a note in my billfold and every prescription that I have and what the medication is, is and, and, and the number that is on the bottle for the, the, the company that is prescribing the medication, all of that information is kept in my billfold so that if anything happens to me, the doctors and the nurses will know uh, how to treat me and what medication I'm on. It offers that kind of simple information that you need. Uh, again, Gleaning for the World is trying our best to do everything we possibly can to help you as a pastor be able to help your people. Uh, you don't need to use our name. You don't need to even give us credit. Our goal is to help you be a better pastor and to be able to train your people in the mission work and the outreach work. And sometimes that outreach work starts inside your own home and inside your own church. Also, one of the things that, that you can consider if you're a local pastor, if a major disaster hits in the area, uh, normally most with most disasters, the the first responders in your community, the police, the rescue, the fire, uh, emergency management system will be able to handle a disaster that where there are 25, 50, 75 families involved. But if there is a major disaster where your community is displaced, you can call Gleaning for the World. We will work with you to get the supplies that you need. The first thing you're going to need is water. People have to have water in a hurry, and often water is the, uh, the first thing that goes down, and people are without it, particularly if the electricity goes out. And, and we can work with you as a local pastor to provide the supplies for you so that you can be the outlet for your community. Uh, we have worked with many, many local churches. And every time that the local church is the one that is handing out the supplies, we see a tremendous growth within that church of new Christians and of Christians in the community that are not attending churches coming to the church. So if there is any way that we can support you and your community, just give us a call at Gleaning for the World. You can Google us anytime at Gleaning for the World and you can see our address and our phone number. Contact us. We'll be glad to help you as a local pastor. So God bless you. Be safe. Be prepared. And if a disaster takes place, let us know. Email us and we'll keep you in our prayers as well.